Good morning, everyone. This is the April 14th meeting of the Elementary School Building Committee, and um, I'm really delighted to see you all again. It, it feels like a long time since we were last together on screen. Um, and every once in a while, I get to see people in person, which is also really nice. Um, I'm going to call the meeting to order, seeing that we have a quorum and do a go across the screen to make sure everyone can hear and be heard um, in just the order I see them on my screen. Sean? Yes. Paul? Present. Mike? Present. Jonathan? Good morning. Ben? I'm here. Phoebe? Hello. And Alicia? Here. As others join, I will just uh, try to make sure I recognize that they're here. Um, we've we've got, um, as you know, we're we're nearing the date of the vote, um, so this is sort of an interim meeting because we have a bunch of invoices, and then there's some thinking forward that'll be just a discussion today. So, Margaret, if you want to pull up the agenda, it's it's pretty simple um, on what we hope to accomplish today. Okay, can everybody see that? I can, so I think that means your screen is showing on mine. Yeah. Okay. So, as Kathy said, it's pretty brief. Um, we're going to, Kathy's going to give an update on uh, outreach and opportunities to be involved. Um, we're going to have a bit of a conversation about the subcommittee discussion that was started and uh, uh, before our last vote. And then um, we have, um, as often happens at the, the stage of the project, a slew of invoices to catch up on. So there are five. I emailed them to you last night because I know it's hard to see what's going on scrolling through them all, um, but we will do that um, as our last um, item. So that is it. Okay, I, so I am the first item on the agenda, and I was just going to do a really quick report on the activities since um, we last met. And I, I shared with everyone, we were trying to set up a series of presentations to the community um, that um, I pulled together a chart set. And the goal of this was really to get information out and be able to uh, hear questions and get answers. And in the course of that, we have a uh, uh, good morning, Rupert. Let's make sure, Rupert, can you, uh, you, Rupert just joined. Can you hear us and we hear you? I can hear you. Great, good morning. So in the course of those, we've been enhancing the website um, so that Amherst School, amherst-school-project.com website has a very, much expanded um, frequently asked questions and answers. And actually most of them have been frequently asked and <laughs> including we've been expanding. And I work with Margaret and she has a terrific person working with her to make it easy. To, it's quite long at this point, but you can click around and find the topic. So if you are all asked questions, um, you don't have to just delve into your memory bank to remember when we talked about that, but there's an expanded set. So at this point, I've we've done. Um, I'm my rough count is about fourteen presentations, um, and a couple of them are. Uh, you know, they've sometimes been small groups. Yesterday there was a um, a group called the um, Amherst Neighbors, which is a volunteer organization that does a lot of work with uh, seniors and others that are living at home, um, but need support systems, not, you know, sometimes just people to talk to. And we had about 20 people um, because the League was the League of Women Voters has come out in favor of the project, which they basically never do. And so this was uh, them explaining why they think this school um, meets the educational needs of kids and is an asset to the community. And then I did the amazing video that Dinesco produced for us that excites everyone because you can talk through the aspects of what the school has and is offering to kids and the community. 
And a lot of the questions, needless to say, have been about how much it's going to cost me. Um, and Sean has done a lot of work on this. So if you get that question, there is a, and we'll make sure you all have it, there's a website on the town side um, on the the debt exclusion that all a person needs to do is plug their address in and you get it, the assessed value of your property. So one of the things we've discovered is because of the newspaper headline of $500 or almost 500, everyone thinks they have a $500 increase. And even though their property is at half that value. So it's trying to say no. Um, and then when when am I going to see it? So Paul, Sean has done, it, it's made it really easy to answer those questions if people have it. The council, I gave you that update. The council voted to move forward with the debt authorization and uh, to take $5 million of the capital stabilization fund and put it into this, which lowers the tax impact. And Paul has pledged to uh, talk about other ways to mitigate um, the impact, uh, particularly focused on income, and that he will be coming back with up to $5 million of different kinds of ideas and methods, not all at once, but by the end of November, I think it was your target date, Paul, if I'm correct. Um, so there, so that has gotten a lot of positive news. The climate action people are out talking about the school in terms of the net zero features of it. Um, and there have been a, actually a fair number of opinion pieces, uh, viewpoints, uh, articles submitted to the Gazette. People are copying me, and I haven't seen any of them. So we may or may not, the Gazette and the Bulletin. So, you know, we may or may not see them, but people are, um, are enthusiastic and support. The two that are coming up, and Phoebe, I'll, I'll just, I'm about to end, but the two that are coming up, there are only two more. Uh, public, you know, this information where we said, you know, we'll, we'll go anywhere if you want to um, hear more about the school. And these are really um, not a vote for the school, but here's information, you know, what's what's the climate side. The two that are coming up is we're going to be at Applewood tomorrow morning. And the we is Lynn Griesmer has come to virtually all of these. Oh, we were, did a radio sh show on Thursday. Yeah, so we did tried to do some media to um, a radio piece. But Lynn has been coming to a lot of them and Mindy Dom is going to come. She came to a one we all did at the Bang Center. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing an undercount now that I think of it. But and Mindy is out at the state level talking about what she can do for this project, but strongly in support of it. So it's really nice to see our, our legislative reps. So uh, tomorrow morning we're at Applewood and then uh, UMass has agreed to host us at the old chapel and that's late breaking news that just came last week and it's at April 20th on at six o'clock and they're putting out the word to the faculty to graduate students to undergraduate students with a the educational design and the climate climate benefits so if you know people on the UMass campus who may or may not have come to this, it's a, a terrific opportunity to reach a different group. Um, and these are all open to all of us. I know uh, Ben has participated in a couple of the community activities, just a visibility around the school. So anyone who wants to be more involved, just get in touch with me because there's a lot of, you know, just one-on-one -on -one kinds of activities that are going on. And uh, you should know the mail ballots are out. People have called me to say they got their mail ballots. Um, if you're asked, early, <clears throat> so, early voting starts on the 24th. Is that right, Paul? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the last day to register is April 21st. So if you happen to find someone who wants to vote who's not registered, they can still register. I'm finished. So Phoebe, uh, uh, just any questions, comments, um, be glad to hear. Yeah, so I was just going to ask, do we have a general sense of how many like unique people have been at all of these? Um, you know, not the sort of diehards that come to every single <laughs> everything we do, but do we have an idea of how many community members we've reached with these? Um, 
The answer is I could go back. Some of them have been very small in terms of the number of people. Um, but what's been interesting is they've been mainly unique people. You know, I haven't seen the same person coming to all of them. And a few, so, so Phoebe, I will try to tally that. You know, I have a rough sense, okay, there were 13 at this one. There were 20 at that. There were a few of them were as small as five, um, the district meetings. And we got snowed out, but in a few of them, there were people who came who asked for the chart set. So I think they are also going out and wanting to be able to talk about it. So it's not just people coming as uh, you know residents trying to figure out how to vote, but also people who, like the league, um, they're asking me for my charts because they want to do a piece on it. So it's it's a mixture of the kinds of people who are coming also. So that none of them have been very large. Um, we went, uh, we did one, uh, we had we had two at the bank center. Anyway, we did at the bank center specifically for seniors. And then it was not a good day for a lot of them to come because of the weather. And we got asked to come over to Greenleaves, which is a retirement center. And we had 20 and then another five. Um, we had two different sessions. So some of it is they couldn't come to one and they asked us to come to another. Um, so we, we're trying to do this where that we, we could at least gather more than it's not just one on one, but groups. Jonathan and then Paul. I mostly just wanted to point out that I think a couple more people have joined us. Oh, great. Thank you. So, Angelica, um, can you hear and let us make sure you can hear? Yes, thank you. And Simone. Yes. Paul. Yeah, I just want to make sure we stay, don't get into strategizing, that we stay with the, this is a building committee, um, it's not an advocacy committee, and that um, we shouldn't be strategizing and talking about how to reach more people and stuff like that. That's not our role in this capacity. So I just want to stay, stay on the straight and narrow if we can. I, I am done. I I am I am completely done on this, and it's just you know I I the advocacy things I think have mainly uh, Denisco has given us such a wealth of information that people are able to take it and run with it um, without us always being there. So as I said, if any the the next event and, Al and Allison has joined us, Kathy. Allison, welcome. Hello, Can, thank you. Great, thank you all. So I'm going to now turn it over to Danisco. Um, and um, as I said, contact me if you want to be involved or if you even want to think of, you know, having committee members show up at some of these has been great. Several people have. Um, and if it's, if it's nothing else, just to show support for the project, it's been really um, appreciated. Thank you. Donna, uh, I, the floor, Donna and Tim, the floor is yours. <laughs> great, thank you. Uh, we're gonna just talk a little bit briefly about um, some of the process as we get into more detailed design <laughs> after the vote. Um, a lot of, uh, you know, we've gotten into detail before and but we've been talking about things in general and as we uh, move forward into design development. Um, can I share my screen? Sorry. Um, do we have to make, Tim, a co-host, I think. Let me see. I, uh, what I was going to share was just a list of a and few. You're, uh, you're now a co-host, so you should be able to. Thank you. So here's just a list of uh, a few potential subcommittees. There will be a lot more work that will have to be done, um, probably with a smaller groups of people. However, those groups are, are formed um, just so that we can get input in a more efficient way for more people and more aspects of the project. Um, obviously, the sustainability uh, net zero committee, which was started early on, will continue to operate and we'll look at more things. Um, the big decisions have been made, but there's definitely a lot more that has to happen. Um, one of the sub points under this committee is integration. We've talked about monitors in the building that can act as a, a teaching device, but you know that you, this is just a sort of a preliminary outline, and maybe that has more to do with educators than the sustainability committee. But these are discussions that we have to have. Obviously, there is uh, a lot of input that we need to gather on site design uh, because the community at large will be using uh, 
most of the site. Uh, so we just have to figure out the best way to get uh, input from all of the stakeholders. Um, and then some very specific uh, working groups on playground equipment and things like that. Uh, there are very specific needs. Uh, some communities really like swings, some don't uh, for safety reasons. So there's some nitty gritty that we have to get into that we can't really uh, parse at the level of the entire committee. And then certainly design uh, the exterior of the building we have started, um, but we'll probably break it up to an interior group and an exterior group. Um, we'll refine selections on the exterior, talk about detailing and composition. Um, and then on the interior, we'll talk about colors, the look and feel of spaces, how that affects wayfinding, how it affects um, what can happen in those spaces and learning. And then uh, rounding it out, uh, there's been a robust conversation about including art in the project and there's even uh, the requirement. So, you know, what the best, how that manifests itself, where it exists in the building or on the site, all of these um, different aspects of the project are gonna need different voices, different people. And we wanna, you know, as soon as we hit the ground running after May 2nd, start organizing these groups. And, and I asked everyone here to think about who would the best voices be to uh, contribute to all of these conversations. Uh, we just wanted to give an overview and get you thinking that that's what we have on that. You know, I, so I just wanted to, um, Tim had run this list uh, quickly by me. You know, some of these could be official subcommittees of the committee, the way we set up the sustainability committee. Some I'm, you know, we, we can hear more from you after May. You know, I'm thinking that it's the school and Mike helping organize teachers, parents uh, around these, you know, so it's not so much driven by the an official building subcommittee, um, but and includes more than our membership. Um, it's a different group. So we can just think through this. And, and Paul, you had early on saying if we're going to officially set up a subcommittee, we should have some sort of charge to it, you know, what, you know, parameters around it, because um, we tend to staff them, particularly if it's not just a subcommittee of our 13, but if we expand the group at all. Um, so this is just a list to be thinking about um, when we come back together, um, that we will uh, work with the NISCO to figure out the best ways of organizing that. So Paul, do you want to speak at all to that? Because I know you you didn't want to reach get to a decision point today. It was more just a, a thinking about where the what kinds of groups we're setting up. Yeah, thank you, Kathy. Um, so um, I think that it's um, when we when this committee sets up a, a subcommittee, it means that they it's, it's publicly posted meetings and all that kind of stuff. So in minutes and and forty eight hours notice and things like that. And I, I think that we we definitely want to divide up the work with this group and have subcommittees like that. And but if we have a whole like if we have six or seven different subcommittees, that's going to be a really onerous task to do all that. So I, I'm, you know, I think there might be some other ways to involve the community in some of these decision making processes. Um, which is I, th I think the goal of this is to get input from the community um, ultimately to bring to here. Um, so yeah, I, I appreciate you sharing this list. I think they're all really, in, I mean, I think we all, a lot of us would be like, wanna be on a lot of them. So um, they're all interesting. I think they're, uh, but if we can limit the number of subcommittees we actually create and then figure out other ways for the community to be involved in these. Cause I think there, we have a lot of talented people in our community who will have really in, uh, great ideas on things. So yes, I, I, I wanna make sure we get a copy of this. Um, yeah, yeah. It's in the packet, we, so. We can, we'll put it in the packet and Tim, you can just send it out to everyone. Yeah. Um, and I don't, I, know it. Any, I, I don't know whether anyone, um, once you get it, since you're seeing it on the screen right now, if there's another group that you wanna ask about, we'll, we're gonna come back to be talking about this. Okay, Tammy is saying she's coming soon, sorry. Um, the the art piece we have um, in the percent for art bylaw we actually have specified a process so 
Paul, I need to talk to you about that separately. Um, if we're doing any kind of commissioning, you know, as opposed to the teachers and students getting together and putting artwork on the wall. Um, so there is there's a process um, to that, and and that uh, would be done over the. Be, it would be, be normally be done along with starting to get through the DD. Like, where is it going to go? What is it? Is it a is it a pic, a mural on a wall? Is it a uh, is it it's some nice kind of thing to sit on outside in the playground that's that's attractive? So, so that um, we can uh, at the. I'll make sure everyone sees a copy of the bylaws. Probably what what I should do. I'll just send it and put it in the packet for the next time. But we don't have to do that right away. Um, I see Alicia's hand is up. Alicia, Alicia, if you're talking, we can't hear you. So Tim, why don't you take it down for now? Sure. So I'll be on the screen. I think Alicia, maybe. Uh, She's probably coming back. <clears throat> she had this issue before and when she rejoined, we were able to hear her. There she is, she's back. Hi yes, Alicia. Can you, can you all hear me now? We yes. Can. Okay, great. Um, I was just saying, I think having the subcommittees is actually a really good idea, to, but I do hear Paul and that having a lot might make it hard to manage. Um, and so I'm wondering, and I know we said we were going to talk about this a little bit more later, but I'm wondering if we can just combine some of the issues because, I mean, people who are looking at interior and exterior and even art, I feel like all of those things could be together in one committee. And I feel like the site uh, plans and the, the playground could also be one committee um, or something like that. Combining the issues might be helpful. Uh, we are certainly flexible to uh, the, the process that works best for the town. We just know that there are a lot of ideas and a lot of decisions to be making. We want to, you know, structure it as the best that works. But if combining them is going to be the best process, then certainly. And there might be committees that we didn't list there. So um, I think designing this is going to be the first step. Jonathan. If you hit your space bar, you'll unmute. There we go. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, my I, the the danger of too many screens is your mouse can get lost on on a, on a far screen. Um, I, my comment was going to be that that some of these you know are issues that will have some longevity. You know the sustainability um, uh, one will probably be one that will go on for some length of time. Um, others uh, may be may have shorter duration. Um, you know, perhaps some of the, the choices around uh, the outdoor equipment and the outdoor layout may, may be a shorter term uh, thing, or maybe some of the, once the, um, you know, kind of colors and, and materials are, are selected, you know, that, that may be, again, a relatively short tenured um, group, whether it's a full subcommittee or not. Thank you. That, yeah, Angelica. Tim, I just had a question about um, disability accessibility. I know that before when I mentioned some issues about just uh, um, uh, keeping in mind um, what uh, all of these various issues of uh, not just sustainability, but design of the playground, interior, mm -hmm. from the perspective of students with disabilities, that you mentioned that the building would be ADA compliant. But I guess I wanted to ask, would there be a consultant here that can assist with design choices so that um, it incorporates sort of the latest and best practices in terms of not just accessibility, but design choices that are like best. I know, for instance, with playgrounds, so much has come along in terms of choices for students that are not just about accessibility, but say having um, um, AAC uh, communication devices like we have at Wildwood or um, you know, movement things that are not just for like what the what the PT um, teachers might choose, but just sort of like so that we could have um, uh, the best that there is out there since we're investing so much here. Donna, yeah, um, yeah, I, I thank you. Um, I just kind of a, a 
comment um, response to you, Angelica, and then Alicia. Um, some of some of the items seem like you know they really belong together, but at the same time, the level of detail and and what we're seeking really belong in two different um, discussions, right? The exterior um, and what it looks like and, and finessing that compared to the interior when we're talking about wayfinding and colors and materials are really independent conversations. Um, and, and trust me, the, these um, can go on uh, and, and be pretty time consuming. So A, we're trying to be respectful of everyone's time. And then the other component, which is important, and, and to your point, Angelica, is um, we really wanna hear from staff as well, uh, especially as it relates to wayfinding and interior colors and things like that. You have some students that have special needs. We wanna be sensitive to those. So some bright colors or patterns, or like it, it's important to have staff involved in, in a lot of the interior conversations. Um, but Angelica, to your point, yeah, we have a playground specialist uh, that will be joining our team. That kind of goes hand in hand with the other comment of merging the site and the playground. The playground, as you've alluded to, takes on a life of its own. It, it literally is going to be an intense, um, time-consuming uh, evaluation of playground. Again, we also want um, the folks from the school, whether it's it's the PT or adaptive PE or, or people from making sure that all students have access and use it. We don't want them just to, you know, be able to go up to the equipment. We want to actually engage them on the equipment. So um, that really is should be a dedicated separate group from the overall site. But we agree um, that we absolutely need to uh, make sure that it's fully accessible. And there may be certain equipment that not everyone can, but we have to make sure that there is enough equipment for everyone to participate in. So we, we appreciate it. The other thing, um, Angelica, to that point is I, I think Kathy, someone reached out and asked us if we were gonna go through the access, you know, um, do a formal like accessibility uh, review, and, and we will do that. Yeah, this was someone from the community and, and Angelica asked, and I see Tammy has joined us. Tammy, just make sure, welcome, make sure you can hear us and we can hear you. Yes, I can. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We are at, so we will, um, in everyone's inbox, um, I'll make sure we, we had a list of, of potential working groups, um, Tammy, uh, that going forward. Some of them might be formal uh, subcommittees. Um, and and one issue would be is uh, if any of our subcommittees are just subcommittees of our, of our committee, because if it was something broader, Paul gets into an appointing process um, if we set up these. So we'll come back to that. Um, everyone, I think, saw that on the agenda, I put the next meeting date, which um, if the school vote is a yes, <laughs> um, the next time we meet will be um, the next stage of this. And I decided to go on vacation right after the vote. So, so um, right now we're talking about, um, it was in your thing, we're talking about May 19th. And if you can make sure you hold that time um, on your calendars, uh, May 19th. Um, and, and so we're gonna be coming back to this topic and really into the next steps on it. Um, Phoebe. Um, so I, I Kathy, I, I raised my hand as soon as you started talking about like dates, that kind of stuff. I'm just trying to figure out, um, uh, I guess what the schedule of topics we're going to discuss is going to be going forward. We've had kind of a little bit of a break. Um, I didn't see, I was a little bit surprised to not see on the agenda kind of a, an MSBA update, like those kinds of okay. things. So, you know, if we can sure. get a little clarity there, that would be great. Thank you. 
Um, sure. Um, Margaret or Donna can update you on MSBA. And then I think, Donna, you, you have a like a tentative schedule, you know, again, assuming the May 2nd vote, uh, everything hinges on that vote on what we're going to be doing after May. So Margaret, Donna on MSBA. Um, the vote, the MSBA vote is April 26th. So um, <clears throat> at that point, you know, we will be able to let everybody know that the MSBA has voted. Um, I, you know, I think it's important to note for everybody's perspective, that's, that's a done deal in the sense that they have reviewed and signed off on our submission. They have met with the leadership and reviewed and signed off on the total project budget. So um, at this point, it's essentially a staff recommendation to the board. So I don't want anyone here to think that that's sort of not gonna happen for any reason. Um, it, can, it should be considered something everybody can anticipate. So then that leads to the vote after. Um, you know, Phoebe, we have not, um, and I would say the consultant team needs to come back together with an overview of what the design development process will look like. What I can tell you is that I, I don't believe we'll have to meet, meet as often. Um, I do anticipate that we will continue to meet at this time because having sort of spent some time a couple of months ago sort of digging into that, I think this was is clearly the best time for the majority of this committee. Um, so I think what um, we should do, but I can't, maybe Donna can embroider on this a little bit. Um, <clears throat> we are going to sort of have to lay something out for you. Donna, do you want to sort of just outline the rough way in which you approach this? I mean, it, it seems to me um, sort of thinking about what needs to happen next. A, a big part of this is really developing more information on the building systems and the building exterior details, but why don't you talk about it from the designer perspective? Yeah, sure, and, and Tim can chime in as well, but um, this, we're not done with design. This is a refinement of the design. So we do know uh, where the building's going. We do know the layout. We know the gross square footage. We, we really do know where the building is going to be sited on the site. Um, that was important from, a, a, a whole host of reasons, including uh, soils and everything else. But now's the time to refine the design. Um, and by outlining those subcommittees or working groups, that that will tell you what it is that we're actually going to be focused on over the next four months. Um, we have we have design development for four months, and our goal is to have all most, not all most of the design decisions made uh, over that time period. We'll be doing another cost estimate um, towards the end of design development, just as a check-in, make sure um, our design basis of design hasn't changed. Hopefully the market has uh, calmed down a little bit, right? Um, we don't have to be talking about um, changing anything that's already in the project to keep the project on budget, but being optimistic for May and then and then for the construction, I, I'm optimistic that um, all of the decisions we've made today will will stand true. But um, so that is kind of the expected process over the next four months, and we really don't have a lot of large um, decisions to be made at the committee level. It's more having input on these small working groups and then reporting up to the overall um, building committee, if that makes sense. So um, we'll leave it to you. I, to, every two weeks is probably too many meetings. Uh, we yeah. need time to get our work done. I don't know if once a month um, seems acceptable to you all just because wanting to um, keep everyone informed as we go through, maybe every three weeks would be kind of a happy medium so that uh, it's not just three meetings or four meetings during design development. But a lot of the um, discussion points really need to occur 
and these smaller groups for us to be able to move the project forward. Can I just add one thing before I take my hand down, which is that everybody should have in their calendar a placeholder invite from me for May 19th. Okay. So, so you know, Phoebe or and and Donna, I think um, that that sort of organizing meeting of May 19th, if we, Donna, uh, in terms of how frequently, if we have subcommittees or working groups that our committee members wanna be on and they're meeting when we're not meeting as a full group, um, that, that it, there's a fair amount of activities there. So thinking, we yeah. should think carefully of when do the 13 of us need to be together and when are we, separately uh, working on things and then figuring out a way of uh, during the time we meet together of having the groups report or getting reports through DONESCO on where the groups are. So so that that discussion hasn't, I haven't been in any discussion like that yet, Phoebe, Anna, you know, Anna, tell me what we're doing in May, what we're doing in June, tell me what do we, you know, um, so I think what what you're asking for is right. And I'm hoping we, when we come together again after the vote, we get that schedule on what needs to be happening uh, when um, to meet this four months of design development. Jonathan? Yeah, Kathy, well, actually, Kathy, just, I'm um, sorry, Jonathan, just to respond to that. Um, if it's acceptable to you, maybe what we can do is take that list, refine it, identify, you know, how frequent each of these groups need to meet and maybe start throwing some dates or weeks that we would recommend. Some of these conversations might be better held in person. So um, we would probably like to maximize our time with you all, uh, maybe spend days. <laughs> we were, you know, uh, suggesting getting an apartment in Amherst, <laughs> but um, we're, I, you know, it, it, if it's okay for you or to you, we'll, we'll, if we map out, you know, this is the expectation and the meetings and try to stra stagger them so that everyone who would like to participate can participate, recognizing people have um, other lives. Um, so that when we hit the ground running May 3rd, that we'll be ready to, to roll. So Jonathan, Jonathan, um, and then I, I just want to have Phoebe a reaction on whether that's enough, in, you know, getting a list. Go on, Jonathan. So I was going to mostly ask that if that was something Denisco could do, which is kind of put together a calendar of things, because um, I, I expect that even even if we were this group, larger group was only meeting every three or four weeks, um, certain subcommittees I can imagine meeting every other week. Uh, just from the intensity of, of some of the decisions and some of the review that'll need to happen. So are people comfortable with, um, if you put together that and then you share it, this is a planning document for us where, you know, I, it, you, we could certainly meet earlier than the 19th. This was driven by Kathy would like to be at that meeting, but um, I'm, I would be fine uh, with the group actually um, I can't join remotely based on where I'm going to be, but we could meet sooner than the 19th. We could meet the 5th. We could meet the 12th. Um, uh, I'm just looking at the Friday. So uh, I welcome free feedback. I uh, selfishly picked a date. I knew I could be here. Um, Paul? I guess it's for Donna. Uh, if we wait till the 19th to meet, does that put us behind schedule or anything like that? Uh, Tim, it would, wouldn't it be great to It would be great to moving. meet earlier, but um, okay. certainly, I mean, uh, DD is four months and you've okay. used almost so, a whole month. So time, but, time is, time is important. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, yeah, so, Paul, let me ask, I mean, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Kathy. Yeah, as I said, you know, Paul, I think that's the right question. You know, the, if, if you all would be ready the 5th or the 12th, you know, those are the two other Fridays. Um, um, I, my deciding to go off to Norway should not, not drive this <laughs> decision. 
ha happy to have the meeting out there with you, Kathy. <laughs> um, sure, or, um, you know, Paul, uh, respectfully, maybe if we met the, you know, in two weeks or whatever, the, I don't even know what day it is, but the Friday right before the vote, where we could even tee people up and ready to go on uh, the committees, like roll that out maybe right before the vote. So we're not having this conversation uh, after the vote and then trying to mobilize. Um, we can set up, organize with Margaret, sign up sheets or whatever it is, identify dates that were available and kind of put a plan together so that we could maybe roll this out in a couple of weeks so that well, to well, your that point. That would be the 28th would be two would, weeks. Yeah. That would be August 28th would be two weeks. Uh, oh, April. April. <laughs> It, would that work? It feels for, like yeah. August. I mean, that actually then the 19th would be you're already up and running and we could. Mm -hmm. this, mm -hmm. I'm just looking around the my the faces. Does, does that work for people? Um, yes. Thumbs up. OK, so let's that that. Great. OK, so April 28th and. If you can also in that um, the, the sustainability uh, subcommittee um, come up with a when you think you will be able to reconvene that group with TT so that once having a date for that would be helpful for especially some of the outside groups in town uh, uh, who are particularly interested in participating in that. So Donna, that's just sure. yeah, but, yeah. But, yeah. I mean, yeah. that would be your scheduling. When does that fit? But um, having that happen in May would be great. Um, yeah, we, we'll definitely want to kickstart that for sure. Um, so, so just to recap, then, uh, based on the um, kind of working groups, or so I, I guess we don't want to call them subcommittees, but the working groups and the areas of design that we wanna focus on going forward. Um, we'll put together kind of a summary or a little description of what the expectation is for each of those. Like what, what does it mean when we're talking about interiors? What does it mean when we're talking about envelope or exterior? Um, perhaps the frequency, there might be some that we don't need uh, to meet as frequently. And then there will be some that probably are going to be a little more intense because we want as much information as we possibly can on the um, design development documents for the cost estimate, right? Um, and then, and then we can leave it to you, whether depending on who's interested, whether it's a daytime meeting or um, you know if we need to do it later in the day or at six o'clock, depending on people's availability. But I know some some of it will. Mike, uh, Tammy, and Allison, you know, we definitely are going to want staff input. And it might even be fun to have kid uh, student input as it relates to playground and um, the design of the hard surface around the school. Okay, so I think we have Phoebe. Fantastic question. You just organized us. That <laughs> thank you very much. Um, and any, I, I did just send an in, a hold invite for that twenty eighth to everybody on the committee. Okay. That's great. Any other questions on on this these related topics of what are we going to be doing for the the next four or five months and work groups? I don't see any. Um, so the other item, the only other item on the agenda is um, the invoices. We have a backlog of invoices that we need to approve. So some of the people who've been working hard on all of this get paid. Um, and okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna pull them up again. If it's easier for you to look at them um, in your email, please feel free. Um, I have. Uh, with each one I have um, highlighted in what I'm going to show you um, a little bit of um, what it is you need to see. And I'm working with one screen this morning, so I may not be able to see you if hand goes up. So um, 
let me know if I'm missing anybody. Okay, so let's get this open in a useful way. So there's there are five invoices in total. And the first one, there's two from Dinesco and three from us. Um, so this first one, this is the end of January invoice from Dinesco. And you can see here on the cover page, they're now sort of close at this point they were closing in on their final um, billing. So this was this billing of theirs was leaving about 93% left in there. And then they also had uh, some billing for consultants, a little bit of wetlands permitting, a little bit of geo or environmental, and a little bit on the rooftop solar. So that invoice, um, when you roll it all, oh, and utility investigation, when you roll it all up, that one is a little under $52,000. Now, I'm going to keep scrolling through these on the theory that um, you may want to take a vote on them as a bunch. So that's the first one. There's a whole bunch of backup here that I'm going to move through very quickly, which is the supporting documentation um, for what the invoicing is for. So it includes, as you've seen before, Denisco's invoice plus the consultant billing. So I'm going to move down as quickly as possible through this. Okay, and then I'm going to go to the next invoice. Whoops, what happened here? Sorry, I, the screen sharing thing is right where I want to see. <laughs> oh, God, man. You, you have to rotate it. No, I, it's, this is, the la this last page is, um, this is the reporting on the, um, the that the MSBA requires for um, uh, workforce participation. The problem I'm having, and I apologize, I'm going to, have to unshare for a minute, is the, the share icon is right where the, I need to click on the next item. So I'm going to have to reshare. Okay, hopefully this will work. So this is hopefully, this is the next invoice. Yes, so this is Denisco's February invoice. And here you can see that at that point, um, the end of February, they were fully billing out for the remainder of their base fee. And there's no consultants involved. So this is shorter. Here's the total. And then the backup is shorter because it's just their one document. And again, here is the, um, uh, <clears throat> the, the workforce reporting. So that's on the last page. So I'm gonna keep moving into our invoices. So here is answers invoice from January. So, you know, again, different format, but what is included here is some of our time. And then we have had consultant invoices also in here. This was our um, estimating invoice. And um, as I think you've seen before, hopefully this is going to show up. What is ours are backed up by this kind of hourly reporting which again, I'm gonna scroll through quickly. And then th that's the estimator's invoice. Uh, the second invoice that's in here for us is from February. So um, smaller amount. Um, about 13450 for us and a little bit for Shelley. And again, there's this kind of detail showing um, 
what we were doing in a detailed fashion. And there's Shelly's invoice. Okay, and then the last one, thanks for bearing with me, most recent is our invoice for March services, uh, 7534.50. And again, we've got all the detail on here for that. So I am going to stop sharing and see if there are any questions. I see no hands. Kathy, is it okay if I make a motion? Yes. I move that we approve the five invoices that were just presented. Shane seconds. If there are no questions, I am going to proceed to a vote. Uh, Paul. Yes. Kathy is a yes. Mike. Yes. Jonathan. Yes. Bibi. Yes. Allison. Yes. Ben. Yes. Sean. Yes. Tammy. Yes. Angelica. Yes. Simone. Yes. Alicia. Yes. It's unanimous with. Uh, one person absent. I'll just have to count. Uh, Rupert had to step out. Okay. Thank you all. Before I open it to public comments um, or, or questions, uh, is there anything else uh, we need to describe right now? We'll discuss. You know, Phoebe, you asked about MSBA. Um, I did send everyone the responses uh, and then the back and forth with UNESCO. One of, I thought the really good news is every space in the building was approved. Um, and Desi approved the, edu you know, the various other issues. So we really got a, um, a strong approval of what we sent in on schematic design. Um, and in case anyone doesn't think they follow us closely, they immediately after the council met, met on April 3rd said, I think the council took a vote and they asked for a certified uh, tally of the vote in ink on paper sent through to them. So they, they do really stamp. follow <laughs> stamp, stamp, stamp by our clerk. Absolutely. You know, so that they, they, they wanted the official that it happened. So they are really following and, and watching um, us and hoping the project goes through. So any other questions, comments? Um, then I am going to open it for public uh, comments. Allison, Allison said she was going to have to be leaving. Well, I see. Um, good. You, uh, Maria, if you unmute, you have been pulled into the meeting. Okay, thank you. Um, I was happy to see that there was a meeting today, but honestly, um, I am really confused about why there we don't have more of a report from the msba the the responses that you just referenced um i don't believe that those have been made public so the last time that you guys met was on february 17th um and we don't have anything you know from the public has no idea about what the msba said about the schematic design was it approved what were their comments um, and I believe that there was also a meeting that has been referenced in other settings about members of this committee meeting with the MSBA. Um, but I was hoping that the school building committee and the public could be made, given more detail about what happened there. Was that a facilities assessment subcommittee? Um, we know that there were changes in the town's share uh, uh, of the reimbursement. And Again, was looking for more information on that. There is, uh, according to the MSBA 
website a meeting to approve the project scope and budget in, at the MSBA for April 23rd and Amherst is listed on that. But uh, I'm hoping that you can send your rule about not responding to public comments. But honestly, I think that's that's what a lot of us in the public were hoping to hear at this building committee meeting. Thank you. Um, well, I'm just going to quickly respond. I sent all the documents, Angela, trying to figure out how to post them. Uh, we sent them to the committee once we received them, but we didn't have a meeting and a meeting packet. So they will be posted. Um, the What they sent to us, they came in relatively recently, but they will be posted. There's a resource page um, in the website. So Angela has to figure out how to do it because um, we want to keep a record of those as well. And the, the meeting is April 26th. Any other, um, are there other public comments? And seeing none, um, um, if there were any other questions from the committee, um, now would be the time to ask them, including anything related to the MSBA process. Seeing none, I think we can adjourn at uh, 9.28. Thank you all, and we'll uh, get back together on April 28th uh, with and Danisco, as soon as you can get that to us, if, you know, a few days before, we'll post it in the packet and share it with everyone um, with the, the potential work groups. And I will remember to do the percent for our bylaw, just so you can see what that more formal commissioning of art would look like um, that we have to set up and Paul would have to do work to actually create create that. That's not something the building committee would create. We would, we would be liaison with it and the, and the design team. Yep, be on the lookout for a sign up sheet, everyone. <laughs> Okay, I and um, this is great. Thank you all for showing up. I apologize for posting it um, with less than a 10 day notice, um, but that just happened. So we are adjourned.